What's up, everybody? I know it's I know it's early. I know I don't periscope around this time, but come on into the periscope. How you guys doing? I probably won't be able to look at the screen until I get to a light. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm on my way to work out, man. Before I go to work. This new day do me is really challenging me. I'm trying to get myself right. Doing well, doing well. Good afternoon. Salisbury, what's up, what's up? Yeah, man, I'm trying to go to the gym, man, because um, I got to lose about 20 pounds, you know? Coach done got a little big. Coach is about 270, um, 65 pounds, depending on the day. And so, as I was, uh, you pushing it? Yeah, I'm pushing it, man. I won't be able to look too much at the screen. I got to make sure I keep my life. But I got a little nice sturdy thing right here. But basically, I just want to talk about something that was on my heart today. Uh, preparation has really been on my heart this past week. Um, I don't think a lot of us are really realizing the beauty of being prepared, the beauty of preparation, the beauty of 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 being whole. <clears throat> and I think when it comes to asking God for things, whether it's a spouse, whether it's uh, money, whether it's whatever you're asking God for, you got to ask yourself the real questions. You got to ask yourself, do I even match what I'm asking God for? Hey, what's up? And many people ask God. Uh, I think I think when we go into God with prayer, if we're very if we're honest with ourselves, the more honest we are, the more precise our prayers will be. The more honest we are with ourselves, the more accurate our requests will be. And so when you're honest with yourself and you're like, you know what, I'm not even prepared for a husband, I'm not even prepared for a wife, I'm not even prepared for a business, you know what I'm saying? I'm not even prepared for it. So why waste my time with God and prayer? Why waste my time with him if I'm not even ready? So my question to you, are you even ready for what you're asking God for? Because God's not going to give you anything unless you're prepared. God's not going to give you anything unless he knows for a fact that you can manage it. God is a steward. God focuses on stewardship. Can you manage? Or would you be a good manager over your family? Would you be a good manager over your kids? Would you be a good manager over your over the job that you're asking for? Because if you're going to show up late to work, if you're going to leave early from work, if you're going to... um. Uh, if you haven't fixed your lust problem, your manipulative problem, if you haven't fixed that problem first, don't expect somebody else to unpack the bags that you should have gave God in your singleness to unpack, right? And so my my motivation for you guys is to say, get prepared. Hey, I heard someone say, turn your waiting room into a working room. Waiting is not sitting on the park bench. Waiting is not sitting there waiting on the train. Waiting is saying, you know what? I'm going to wait and serve God because as I serve God, I'm serving myself. When I'm serving God, I'm developing. And you know what? And if you do that, I guarantee it that your, the thing that you're asking God for will come sooner. Many people who procrastinate today, when you procrastinate one day, you may push your dream six months back. I tell people, don't waste your days. Because when you waste your days, you'll push your dream back. Why you want to push your dream back when you could have pushed your dream forward? Don't push your dream back. Pull your dream forward. So before you go into prayer, before you get on your knees, go to your desk and write down, before I go to God who is holy, before I go to God who is who is the greatest businessman in the world, the man who focuses more on stewardship than he does anything, before I go to his courts, let me make sure my requests are sound. Let me make sure my requests are accurate. So the best way to know that you're prepared for something that you're asking God for is when you see the ch seasons change. When you start seeing things change inside of your heart, when you're not lustful anymore, when you haven't watched pornography in, in years, when you haven't slept around in years, why would God give you a husband or a wife and you still fornicating? Why would God give you a husband and wife and you still watching porn? Why would God give you a husband and wife and you can't tame your tongue? Why? I have to ask myself my tough questions, man. When you, get, when you ask yourself the tough questions, you get the real answers. So when you ask yourself, am I even ready? It'll let you go to God with more accurate prayer requests. You see what I'm saying? But many people are over here just like asking God for stuff. And then when you ask God for stuff that you're not prepared for, you get mad at God when he don't bring it. But God ain't going to bring it to us if we're not ready. Manage where you are and watch what you ask for come quicker. Now, everything is predicated on these two things. God's will and God's timing. You could be ready. But it ain't God's timing. People, you know how to you know how to cook, you know how to take care of a man, you know how to oh the sun, the sun shining on me. You know how to you know how to do all these great things. But God said, you may be prepared, but it's just not my timing yet. Like I said yesterday, God's a generational God. God looks down the road. God looks down the path. 
God says, you know what? If I give you this man too soon, it'll mess up your children's life. If I give you this wife too soon, it may mess up some things in your life. If I give you a million dollars, it may mess it may mess you up. You may be prepared for it. You may have the financial stability, the financial prowess in your mind to be able to manage it. But God is saying, man, hey, I got to think about your children's children. And that's why people be asking God for money. People be asking God for all these different things. And God's like, man, I give you ideas. He said, I teach you your I teach your hands to prosper. I don't give you, I don't give your hands prosperity. I teach your hands how to prosper. Meaning that he's going to put you in a place where you are, where he trains you how to, un, how to treasure the value of a dollar. I'm glad it's, I'm glad it's blessing you guys. Thank you guys for joining me as I ride to the gym. I know I'm much, I'm, I'm moving the iPad around because my hands get tired holding this iPad. When I get to a light, I'll be able to answer some questions, man. I got about 15 minutes on the road. But yeah, man, I just want to come from my heart, man. That's why I'm challenging myself to go to the gym. I'm going to the gym now because I got to make sure I'm sturdy enough for the call. I can sit here and 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 preach the gospel and, and be... Oh, my bad. <laughs> um, I'm trying to... Um, can you pray for me to get my prayer life together? I will pray for you. Give me one second. Let me get to a light. For these people beside me, you know, think I'm crazy. But what I want to tell you guys is like, <clears throat> like for me, man, I got to go to the gym. You know, I if you watch my videos, my early videos, I was skinny in the mug. I was in shape, six pack and everything. I was, I was decent. But you know, work, work gets a hold of you. And you know what I'm saying? I started gaining weight and now I'm, I was 280 just three weeks ago, 280 pounds, almost 300. My goal is to get to about 250, but I got to go to the gym. I, I have to work from 2 to 10 every day, 2 to 10. Now, I had to say, you know what? I can't change my work schedule. I got to change my life schedule. I got to I gotta get it in. If that means I got to go to bed by 12, 31 o'clock to make sure I'm out of the house. I'm out of the house late today because I spent some time with God. And, you know, God be trying to take out my time, but it's cool. You know, God can do that. <laughs> God can take my time, you know, because he gave me time. But my goal is to get to the gym every day at 10 o'clock so I can be able to work out and dedicate two to three hours to unplug and then go to work. See, it takes hard work to be successful. Like, ladies and gentlemen, I want to be great. You see what I'm saying? I want to be great, man. I, I want to be the best to do it. I, I have this, and I don't tell too many people this, so keep this to yourself. I want to be the best to do it since he did it. I want to be the best to do it since Jesus did it. I want to be that great. Now, will I be one of the greats? Will I be in the top 10, top 100? I don't know. But I know for a fact that I'm striving to be great because I believe what the word says about doing exploits. I want to heal the sick and I have healed the sick. I want to cast out devils and I have cast out devils. But I believe that scripture when he says greater works that you would do. And imagine if you tap into that great, that greatness, you know, I don't, I don't want to be an average believer. I don't want to be that minister that's just good with presentation skills and, and know how to move the crowd. I want power. And you don't get power by just practicing your message. You get power by prayer and fasting. You get power by being in shape. You get power by giving God the first fruits of your day, man. If you want, listen, I tell ministers all the time, man, if you want to be great with the things of God, be on your knees. Before you stand before people, get on your knees. See, there you go. I like to like the word results. If you want results, I'm telling you, prayer is the prerequisite to your results. If you want results in your life, you got to pray. You got to fast, yo. People try to get people try to get things out of this life. The natural world is only a small percentage compared to the spiritual world. The spiritual world is bigger than this natural world. So we're trying to get it fasting too, exactly. Many people try to get things out of God with shallow prayer and shallow fasting. The disciples over there deal, dealing with a kid, right? The dad was like, yo, man, y'all not getting this demon out of my kid quick enough. Jesus come down the hill. You know, Jesus just came from the mountaintop with God. I don't know what Jesus was doing. I don't know if he was getting, you know, what he was doing, what he was doing. And when he got down to the mountain, the, the dad was like, man, can you get this demon out of my kid? Because your disciples can't do it. So Jesus, you know, was like, let me, let me handle this business real quick. And the disciples said, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus was like, some things don't come out but by prayer and fasting. Some of you guys got strongholds. Some of us got strongholds. Some of us got so many things deep-rooted in us, right? We have things so deep-rooted in us that you think just going to church is going to get it out of you. Reading your Bible every now and then is going to get it out of you. No, you got to pray and fast for your family. Pray and fast for your son to come home. Pray and fast for your daughter to come home. Pray and fast to get through that turbulence in your marriage. You got to pray and fast, yo. Listen, we are in the end times. It's time out for just church attendance only. 
it's time for prayer and fasting, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I'm striving to be great, man. I went through some tough times. Last year was hell for me. But it was good that I was afflicted. Because your boy ready. This year I'm taking everything, yo. Don't leave nothing on the table around, coach. I'm taking everything. Because I believe that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. But you got to understand, you determine the spiritual climate of your day. You determine the spiritual climate of your day. You have authority. Oh, see, the devil don't fight. These demons don't fight a physical battle against believers. They don't fight a physical battle against... Oh, the sun's shining on Coach Josh. Sun's shining. Listen, the devil don't fight a, a physical battle with you. He fights a psychological battle. He can't make you do anything because he has no authority over you. You got to fight for yourself. You got to say, you know what, Satan, demons, I got authority before you talk that talk. Don't talk that talk if you ain't ready to back that talk up. Them demons will come for you. Listen, I told about earlier in ministry, I was that that uh what's that? What's that what's that preacher? I was very zealous. Hold on, let me wait. I'm gonna let the sun shine on me for a minute so you can see the glory of God shining on Coach Josh. The glory is shining. Okay, let me get over here. My fingers, my fingers, you know. People, the, listen, man, when you talk that talk, you gotta back that talk up. You gotta back that talk up, yo. I'm telling you, you gotta back it up. You can't, you can't talk though talk and don't have faith to back it. Like, the, like the, some of the disciples got beat up by some demons, man. The demon said, "Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you?" Listen, man, I'm probably on the devil's top 100 list, man. And that's why I gotta make sure I stay fervent in prayer. I gotta stay fervent and fasting because I'm powerful out here. And I'm not talking boastfully. I just know who my God is and I believe him. That's it. If we only understood how, okay, we good. We got shadow right here. If we only knew how powerful we are, yeah, there you go, boasting in God. I can't do it in my own strength, and since I know I can't do it on my strength, I got to get more strength, more power to do this ministry work, man. That's why I got to go to the gym. What's up, man? That's why I got to go to the gym. I got to make sure you know what God am I ready, <clears throat> and that's why God would delay your call sometimes. He'll delay your purpose sometimes because he knows when I delay your purpose, when I delay your purpose, I'm strengthening you. There's power in the delay. Praise him. God is faithful. There's power in the delay. When God delays things, he's just giving you more time to prepare. I remember for years, I will, I will, every Thursday, I've been, I've been, pre I preached more. I preached every Thursday just about. I preached 95% of the, the Thursdays in the last seven years. No, six years. I preached 95% of those Thursdays. The only Thursdays I took off was Thanksgiving and when Unplugged was down for a few months. But I preached every Thursday. People don't know. I used to take the bus to my own Unplug. Me and my mom shared a car for years. This Durango I'm in, I just got it this past year. <clears throat> and me and my mom used to share a car. And there was times when my mom, I didn't want my mom to drive home from work at 10 o'clock at night. So I had to take the bus to Unplug. What up, Palm Beach? What up? I had to take the bus to Unplug. My first videos was just me and my sisters and two other people. I had a little webcam. <clears throat> and when I first did my videos, I was like, man, I'm only going to get like two or three likes. And I kept going. You keep going. You go beyond the small beginnings. When you realize that everything starts small. <clears throat> everything has small beginnings. How you handle the small will determine how you handle the big. If you're faithful over little, he'll make you faithful over much. <laughs> I owe you six years of preaching. Well, I got six years worth on YouTube. <laughs> I got about six, seven years worth of you uh, videos on YouTube. I just want you guys to tap into your source, man. I want you guys to go beyond the small beginnings. I want you guys to go beyond those resistance because behind every wall of resistance is a reward. Use this demonic resistance as weights. You bench press these demonic warfares. You see what I'm saying? You bench press them. You get stronger. Sometimes when demons come for you, use them juggles to make you stronger. <clears throat> Man, I'm so tempted to go to Duck Donuts right now. I'm tempted to go to Duck Donuts right now. But I haven't had Duck Donuts in a month. And that's and that's and that's a miracle, as young. If you never had Duck Donuts, you're missing out on life. You know? Yeah, I'm not gonna go to Duck Donuts. I'm not. Because y'all watching me on Periscope. But I could just cut you off right now and blame it on the reception. But you know. I can't lie to the Saints. Duck Donuts is the best donuts in the world. It's better than Krispy Kreme. Listen, Duck Donuts makes their batter out of funnel cake. <clears throat> funnel cake, ladies and gentlemen. You mean to tell me I can have the fare every day? I can have like a, a, a piece of the fare every day. 
It tastes like funnel cake. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'm telling you. You get, come to Charlotte and try some duck donuts. It'll change your life. I ain't talking Duncan. I'm talking the duck. Like like the quack. You know, the people that the, the little animal that quacks. Duck donuts, yo. Crispy. Listen. <clears throat> you blast him in the Holy Ghost right now. The Holy Ghost said duck donuts is <laughs> the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said duck donuts is better than crispy. Krispy Kreme fell off, yo. Krispy Kreme really has fallen off, man. Krispy Kreme was my love, man. Krispy Kreme was my everything when I was a kid, man. My everything. My mom used to bring that box home. I, I would go find a corner and just praise the Lord. You know, I would fall on my knees and just, just weep before the Lord because I'm like, God, you're so gracious to me. But Krispy Kreme fell off, man. <clears throat> it's too sweet. Duck Donuts just has the right amount of sweetness. And you determine her Herbalife. Well, I should be, yeah. I should be, I should be <laughs> eating more healthy. And I do eat healthy now that I'm doing this 10-week plan. Yeah, Krispy Kreme's too sweet, man. All that high fructose corn syrup and stuff. The UK is so boring, we only get crisp grocery mate. <laughs> That's cool, man. Ain't no wrong grocery mate. We got buy low food line, Publix. <clears throat> Harris Teeter. It's funny, like every city got a, a grocery store with a funny name. But you know. You should have some funnel cake. Love funnel cake. Yeah, funnel cake's the best, man. I'm about five minutes from the gym and I'm let you guys go, man. Yes, herbal life is really good for weight loss. I pre what kind of flavors though? I, I can't be just tasting kale, man. I should go give me a smoothie though from Tropical Smoothie King. But y'all rocking with me, man. Thank you for the hearts, man. I'll post it on YouTube, man. I gotta get I got three videos to post on YouTube, man. I just been busy, yo, man. I'm dealing with some partnerships with the Y, man, trying to get some things together. Hey, what's going on, Cattle Cattle Yeah 143? Working on some things. Hey Josh, started my women's ministry today. Can we pray before you go? Yeah, man. You started your women's ministry. Look at How do you learn to begin to learn to pray in spiritual warfare? <clears throat> Kale is, I know Kale is great. How do you begin to learn to pray in spiritual warfare? Um, first, I say fill your soul up, fill your mind, fill your spirit up with the with with you knowing, what's up, Brooke loving guy. You got to make sure you fill yourself up with faith for him. first. Look up, go to Google.com and type 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 up scriptures on who we are in Christ, who we are in Christ, what it means to be in Christ. Because that will fill you up with the confidence you need. Because the word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The, the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Meaning that you got to read God's word on specific matters to build your faith in specific matters, right? Google, I say there's two G's that I go by. God and Google. God and Google, man. You can find just about anything. <clears throat> God is bigger than Google. Though. I ain't trying to say Google is Google's over God. Oh, the Lord is shining on me again. The Lord is shining on Coach Jack. But what I'm trying to say is that you got to... Um, Fill your faith up with spiritual scriptures first that talks about who I am in Christ. I got uh, 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 Email me, unplugshawgmail.com. I got a book on spiritual warfare that I wrote called World of War Me. It gives you understanding about how to wage in warfare. Um, <clears throat> but you got to be cautious. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. Because when you start, listen, when you pray, do you not understand the, the power in prayer? The, the spiritual power that, oh, the cops, the popo. We good, we good. You know what? He know who I am in this Durango. They, I run this city, man. Tell the cops, the PAs, the feds to come get a little ditty for y'all. But um, <clears throat> I'm just joking. I don't run this city at all. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, well, not, well, yeah, yeah, it depends. I mean, cause if you have, if you know, if you know who you are in Christ, you have power over all the uh, spiritual warfare. Um, even the principalities in your city. That's why these, these spirits don't like. But that's why I got to go through so much resistance on Wednesdays and Fridays. I go through my biggest uh, resistance. Uh, let me show you my. I ain't gonna show y'all my job. Can't show y'all my job because y'all come find me. You'll come find me and then y'all be like, hey, I know where Coach Josh work at. Then y'all gonna snatch me up, put me in a trunk, and take me and make me do periscopes at your house privately. I can't do that. I can't show you where I work. But then you'll come find me. Like, what's that do? Uh, <laughs> what's that? That was like three years ago. But to answer your request. Yeah, warfare ain't no joke, man. And I tell people, man, you're fighting an enemy that you can't see. Imagine fighting an enemy. Man, I can't find no parking. Imagine fighting an enemy that you cannot see. Right? So so when you fight an enemy that you cannot see, you got to make sure you tap into a God who you know and who a God you can't. Man, that parking spot too small for this Durango. My Durango got a fatty. There we go. We good. Right, so you begin spiritual warfare. Starting, you start your spiritual warfare prayers by saying, "You know what, God, I'm a, um, 
I'm going to fill myself up to the brim. I'm going to fill myself up to the top. Yeah, be led by the Holy Spirit, then you can see. I, I mean, I'm funny sometimes. Mate, I'm at the gym. You got to wrap up now. I know. Can't be missing nothing. Oh, my bad. Five more minutes, I'm going to let you go. But you got to be able to say, I'm going to tap into this Wi-Fi first. Well, we good. I can't even get out. Um, but you got to fill yourself up with God first and your faith first to say, you know what, God, I'm going to fight this thing in faith. Because I'm telling you, I tell all the people that I love that the devils, de demons don't come from me face to face. They attack my loved ones. <clears throat> they attack everyone around me. Because they know if they attack everyone around me who I love, they'll get to me. That's why the devil thought that he can get God by putting sin in man. So if he said if I could put sin in man, then I can. Then God would have to kill man because man is now full of sin. But God said, I'm going to take it on myself and die for the people so I can begin to put myself in them. Therefore, we can have a connection. And so right now, you got to fill yourself up with God because your source and strength comes from him. Um, but email me. I'll give you that book here. It is right here. I wrote this book called World War Me, Winning the War Within. It's, uh, I talk about from Ephesians 6, I believe, about spiritual warfare. It's, a, oh. Okay, I'll pray for you right now. I'll pray for you right now. And this book right here helps too. I'll give you the PDF copy for free. But let's pray. Let's pray for our sister. Let's pray. And I'm going to answer one question. I'm going to go in this gym. So I'm going to... Then I'm going to duck donuts. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for my sister who's asking for prayer over her prayer life. Father God, put more logs on that flame, God. Give her a fervent spirit. Give her a spirit that's going to lead her to pray uh, without ceasing, God. I thank you, Father God, that you'll strengthen her, that you'll keep her, that you'll restore her, Father God, that you'll give her the strength that she needs to continue to pray. I pray right now, Father God, against every demonic spirit that's coming against her right now, and I pray right now that the precious blood that has saved her will give her the peace and comfort that she needs to be able to rely on you like never before, giving her the, the fervent spirit she needs to pray. And I pray right now for her, Father God, that she'll be able to pray, pray with strength, pray with power, Father God, just give her give her a, a, a touch of you, even a, a, a outpouring of you, Father God, that she can't help but talk to you, God. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. I hope that blessed you. I hope pray that keeps you. Man, I don't want to work out, man. Real talk. Got to get them beats ready. That money green beats. Money, no, I'm joking. <laughs> that kale green beats. One more, can we pray for my ministry? Yeah, yeah, we can. I will email you. Email me, so I get those books for free. <clears throat> or find me on Facebook. Lord, I pray for uh, the young lady who asked me to pray for a ministry. I pray, Father God, you will teach her hands how to get wealth, Father God. Teach her hands how to market to her, her community, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for her ministry, for her women's ministry, Lord, that you'll strengthen her. That, Father, you'll give her wisdom beyond her years. Father, God, let her not hesitate to ask you for wisdom. I pray, Father, God, you surround her with the right support system. Help her to know the difference between the wheat and the tares. I, Father, God, I pray she know the difference between those who are going to drain her than those who are going to sustain her. So I pray right now, Father, God, that you'll give her wisdom, that you'll teach her, that you'll guide her. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And I'm going to tell you about ministry, man. <clears throat> I've had witches come to unplug. I've had people try to sign up close to me that were witches that wasn't of God. And when you start a ministry, be, re be ready for that resistance. I sent you a message through the Unplugged site. I'm not sure if it made it to you. Send it to me again. How can we email you? Go to IamUnplugged.com. IamUnplugged.com. And then go to contacts. Email me that way. You about to play some ball? Yeah, I'm about to play some basketball, man. I'm going to go, go Steph Curry on these little boys out here. Then I'm going to go lift some weights. Your boy, your boy got to lose 20 pounds in about seven weeks or so. How do you recognize witches? Uh, discernment. You can tell who a witches are. You can tell who a witch are because they can't look you in the eye. <clears throat> if they do look you in the eye, your spirit just kind of feels, you feel the, a demonic presence. And then I always tell people, witches are very uh, cunning and aggressive. And so what happens is they'll come and show up and they'll they'll be they'll probably be your biggest donors. They'll probably they'll try to gain your trust. They'll try to gain your trust by donating. They'll try to gain your trust by serving. I just want to help you wherever I want to help you. And then, but one thing you do is you ask God to reveal the witches. When a witch asks you to do something in your ministry, tell them you gotta not pray about it, but tell them I'm not ready yet. You know, give me some time. They'll usually leave without, yeah. Like a Jezebel spirit, them girls try to come for you, boy, right? 
But the thing is, you gotta you gotta give God time to reveal them. And once they're revealed and they, they can't get access to you, you cannot be gullible in ministry. You cannot be gullible in the ministry. If you're gullible, if you're not sturdy and strong, if you don't know how to use the word no, you will be used in ministry, even by people who are not witches. But they usually leave after two weeks because your boy got that power. But even right now, I'm watching <clears throat> who comes unplugged now because unplugged is a little bit more positioned where God wants it to be. And, and witches like to show up. And show out. Um, but not everybody who is not always witches. There's some people who are uh, just used by the demonic spirits in them. They don't even know why they even had unplugged. And you can't reach them. You try to give them advice. They don't even use your advice. You're just like, man, all right, I can't cast pros to swine no more. And then they leave your ministry in less than two or three weeks. <clears throat> you got to be smart in this thing. You got to be wise as a serpent. One case, yeah, they'll come for you. I got. That's why I don't like my job, man. I love my job. I love working for the wild. I don't like my position. Because anybody can come and see me. You see what I'm saying? I shouldn't be talking like this. Nobody can't come see me. I'm upstairs on the seventh floor. You can't even find me. That's I'll just end that real quick. I have a Kogan that has said that she practices witchcraft. How do I handle her? Keep your distance. Because <clears throat> if they're practicing witchcraft, they got to find somebody to practice on. So don't be too close to be practiced on. You got to have that power, yo. But let me get in this gym, y'all. Y'all going to keep me from... Y'all want the coach to stay fat. See? Y'all selfish. Y'all want me to stay fat. But I love you guys. I got to go. I'll probably periscope tomorrow or something like that. I got to go work out. Love you guys. Peace.